Air tags is out, what do we do, Monty? What was the first thing? Yeah, we smushed it with a hammer, check that video. We also kind of figured out the general accuracy for these tiny little uh, dongles slash little nub floaty things. Last thing we're gonna figure out is if we can actually shut these things up and by shut these things up, well, stop them from tracking while keeping them fully like operational. So putting them in a variety of different places to see if different materials will affect the uh, tracking ability of the air tag. Right off the bat, I know that submerging this thing is probably gonna like eliminate any sort of signal. Wi-Fi doesn't work uh, with waterproof cases when it's in water. So I'm gonna assume that the Bluetooth signals are kind of the same. Even with Wi-Fi, I've got two different mesh routers running in this house, one downstairs, one upstairs, and they provide different signals all over the place. I know that in my home, um, there's a brick wall where the old house used to be and nothing goes through that brick wall. And so all these things will affect how strong the signal is when it comes to tracking these air tags. So we're going to go through the entire house and we're just going to see how well these little dongles work. So the first thing we got to figure out is which one of these tags is actually the one labeled signal tester. So we have to go to find my and accuracy test, that's not what we're looking for. We are looking for signal tester. Uh, play sound. So it's this one. So the first thing we're gonna do is going to be the submersion test. Now these things aren't, I think they're IP67, so they can sur survive um, in water for like an hour and a half at three meters. So they're not completely waterproof, but they can definitely, uh, they're definitely water resistant, weather resistant, we'll say. So I'm just gonna put in the tank of my toilet. Oh, that's gonna be hard to get out. Um, so let's see what happens when we do this. Huh? That's kind of neat. I wonder if it could uh, find it. It plays the sound, but, oh, that's kind of neat. A little weaker than usually within a meter I think you'll start getting the uh, arrows but you got to be pretty close I think and I don't know if it's because the tracker is at the bottom of the tank so here's the next thing we're gonna try I've got a cup in there and so the air tank is submerged surrounded by water we're gonna see if look at that Nothing. What happens if we put the iPhone in? Nothing. All right, well, kind of gross. Um, let's go and put it back down at the bottom again. All right, so it's not, it's touching the bottom of the tank and yeah. So in order for you to completely nullify the air tag, it needs to be surrounded by uh, water completely. So, you know, heads up. <laughs> all right, so I've wiped it all off. This is a Case Defy uh, Ultra Impact case. This is one of my favorite clear cases. Do check that video out. Um, I've cleaned them all, wiped them with uh, alcohol wipes. So we're gonna move on to the uh, brick test, I think. All right, on to the brick test. Now this is basically just a wooden box with a bunch of bricks in it. There's no mortar in between all the bricks, so it's just very dense material for the signal to go through. So we're just gonna put it right in the middle, and then we're just gonna pop that on top. So it's not a complete seal. There's still kind of gaps uh, through everything, but this entire setup was very effective at testing the different uh, Wi-Fi routers that 
uh, I used to test. And so the signal degradation from this setup would be actually measurable. So let's go see if we can hear it. It should work. Yeah. But the true test is Yeah, that's pretty quick. Well, yeah, that's about 20 centimeters from the iPhone to the middle of the box. So, going through brick, not going to be a problem. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it into the freezer. And if you guys are wondering where Monty is, I'm moving to a different location. Where's Monty? He's three meters. <gasps> There's Monty. He has an air tag. There he is. So with the freezer, it's kind of neat because you've got metal all around. So you'd assume it'd almost be like a Faraday cage, <laughs> but you still do have like the, uh, the seal on the outside. And so the signals would most likely pass through the seals, but we'll put this tag right there. I'm going to close up the fridge or freezer and cancel out of that. The signal tester. Let's play the sound. You can hear it. Let's try to find it. Signal is weak. Try moving around. 4.1 meters, so 12 feet. Um, Three, that's about 10 feet away. What happens if we move a little closer? Oh. It's nearby. One meter to your right. Nearby. 60 centimeters. So the distance between the phone and the thing is pretty close, but it is kind of freaking out a little bit. 1.3. <laughs> That's over there. I don't think that's right. So I wonder if it's actually trying to get through the seal. It's tracking it through the seal maybe. Because it'd be right about here. So putting in the freezer looks like it's going to be a pretty effective way of messing with the signal. It doesn't completely mute it like the uh, the water tank will, but there it is. So the last thing we're gonna do is try to build just a really quick Faraday cage. I'm gonna put this tracker in here. I'm gonna put it on top of this can. I'm gonna put this can on top of that. I'm gonna tape it all up. Um, we're gonna then do the location tests and see if anything changes. Then we're gonna wrap it up in some tin foil and see if that does anything. And then if all that does still works, if the tracker still works, we'll uh, try to seal it up in a metal trash can. So that's the plan. All right, so We've got some foil tape connecting these cans. The uh, tracker is sitting surrounded by plastic so that there's no contact to any of the metallic sides. Let's see what happens when we play the sound. It's there. Let's see how well we can find it. 1.5 meters. Yeah, probably uh, better than the uh, freezer. <laughs> Wonder, just to put an iPhone right beside it, what would actually happen? <laughs> it actually made it worse. All right, now we're gonna take some tin foil and just wrap that all up.
All right, so there's several layers of tin foil, probably a dozen or so. And open up the signal tester. So that makes sense. That just deadens it all. Air tag not reachable. Move around to connect. All right. So kids, if you ever need to mute your uh, parents' air tag that they gave you to track you, um, wrap it up in a bunch of tin foil. Parents, if you see something like this in your kid's house, they're trying to hide something from you. All right, this all wasn't that surprising. I guess the water part was surprising. This tin foil thing is not. Makes a lot of sense why people wear tin foil hats to keep the uh, radio, radio waves from controlling us, I guess. So that's all we got. Questions, comments, leave them down there. First time watching one of my videos, uh, subscribe. We do unsponsored, unbiased content. We're reviewers, not influencers. We don't get paid to do any of these videos. We do them because, well, we feel like the world needs to know about stuff like this. Like how to hide your air tags. This is how you hide your air tags, apparently. Um, that's Monty. He's been a co-host for a long time. Val's not here. I'm sorry. Uh, that's kind of all we got. Thanks for watching.